Hi everyone, it's Sherry here from Box. Super excited to be back with another episode of Beyond the Box, hashtag influencer. And today we are going on to a topic that everyone's really excited about. It's travel and super thrilled to have Casey Barks here with us from Stay Pineapple Hotels. So I came across this brand, the dynamic, the energy of the company is amazing. Casey has been in the hospitality industry his whole career. I know there's a lot of issues and challenges when it comes to working with influencers, but I think Casey has a very good handle on how to best work with travel influencers. I'm sure that you will enjoy the conversation as much as I did. Hi, Casey. Welcome to the show. So excited to have you here. Thank you very much. No, this will be uh, very fun. Looking forward to chatting with you. Awesome. Tell us where you're at, what part of the country, what brand you're with, and then we'll dive in. Yeah, so um, I'm with State Pineapple Hotels. We are a boutique hotel brand with 10 properties nationwide. I'm based out of our headquarters office. It's here in Bellevue, Washington. Um, we have our largest collection of hotels in the Puget Sound region. Uh, so four properties in the Seattle market. Um, so good to have headquarters here close by. So, and I came across your company and fell in love with the vibe. So I have to have to talk to you more directly. Um, tell us a little bit about, I know that you have a long history in hospitality, but for all those listening who want to get into hospitality, how did you get started? Because it seems like it might have been in college. Uh, yeah, it was actually before college. I started oh, busing wow. tables at the age of 14. Uh, only child with a single mother. And she told me if I was going to go out to the movies and do things with friends, I needed to uh, make some money doing it. So um, started started uh, busing tables at a, at a restaurant in my hometown. Um, and then in college, I uh, served and bartended as a means, you know, uh, making money and, and uh, getting my education in PR and marketing. That's amazing. And you didn't get you, you, you embrace the industry rather than kind of um, ran away from it. When I was getting close to the end of my college time um, and I started looking into where I could get into some internships, uh, it just kind of became apparent to me that it was actually an industry to do PR and marketing for hotels and restaurants. You know, I had spent at that time, um, I had been almost seven years serving, bartending, doing in room dining for resorts. And um, it just, it, it made the most, it also was, I wasn't getting offers from any other internships um, <laughs> because my knowledge, you know, I didn't have a tech side or, uh, you know, right. it was my knowledge really leaned to hospitality and tourism. Um, and so I got a great opportunity with Wagstaff Worldwide, an agency in San Francisco back in 08. Yeah. And that was, that was really what started. It was like, holy shit, I can, I can take this education and combine it with my experience and love for food and dining and travel. And that's kind of the start of it all. And so how did you get to stay pineapple when, what brought you there? I'd love to hear that. Yeah. Um, so I was with Fairmont hotels and resorts for about seven, over seven years. Canadian, right? Yes. Yes. Well, now French, technically under the uh, oh. Accor umbrella, okay. um, but headquarters for Fairmont as a brand based out of Toronto. And yes, Canadian brand, um, you know, and fun fact there, like Fairmont and Four Seasons are both out of Canada and it just speaks to the hospitable nature of the culture, you know, two of I'm our Canadians. So, you know, oh, like, okay. Yeah. I lived yeah. in Vancouver for a few years. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. Which was really fun. I got to work as a regional PR director for the five properties in the BC region. So that was great. Um, but, you know, I was with Fairmont and the pandemic was going on and uh, Omicron came around and I was just burnt out crisis messaging and mitigation. And I couldn't, I just couldn't do another wait. And so I left for the wine industry and my wife and I moved down to Oregon. Um, I worked for a great a wine. Winer. Yes. Great wine. Worked for Willamette Valley Vineyards, wonderful winery, produced some amazing product. Um, and once the pandemic was over and travel was coming back, I just, I really missed, uh, the industry. Um, my wife really missed Seattle. It was our favorite city we lived in. We lived in six cities over 10 years, just moving around for work. And so, um, 
I started looking for opportunities in the Seattle area for a hotel job and uh, State Pineapple was looking to hire a corporate director of marketing and it just worked out. That's awesome. So tell me, I think I know what the pineapple symbolizes because my friend works in hospitality, but you tell us because I don't know if everyone knows it because I never did before. <laughs> yeah. The, the, so pineapple is known as the international symbol of hospitality. You'll see it on a lot of hospitality industry websites or brands. Um, it, historically, it started from, like, I think, the 16th century, uh, mm. where the, yeah, it was a very um, status symbol focused item in the UK or in the European royal, uh, royal houses. And so it was this status symbol of if you had a uh, pineapple in your home, you were of a certain level of wealth. I think they mm. were, I've read things before where the uh, value dollar to dollar for the date was like five to $10,000 just for one pineapple back then. Um, and yeah, and it just created this sort of cultural view of what pineapples were. Uh, um, and then it really became more of a symbol of hospitality in America, uh, the 18th and 19th century, when it was given as a gift, um, sort of a holidays you go over to somebody's home bring a very very um high profile gift so you bring pineapple and it just became this status symbol within a being a hospitable person being uh giving and that's what hotels and travel and hospitality is all about and it got absorbed into that culture as well i mean i've been in hotels where it's not even in part of their branding but like the lamps are like the pineapple or there's other so it always, if you pay attention now, I think people will start to notice. So yeah. tell us a little bit about the brand's origin, because I think, you know, for many of us, you know, we'd love to hear that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So uh, our founder is Michelle Barnett. Um, she is still involved uh, from a leadership capacity. Her title is Chief Pineapple, um, <laughs> but she founded the organization back in 2010. She had spent uh, years in high profile hotel uh, positions through sales, operations. Um, and then she returned to the Seattle area to help out her family with their uh, real estate company. And then from there, she just started, uh, she kind of decided why not combine my family business with my passion for hotels and hospitality and started buying and opening hotel properties. Uh, it started with our first location, uh, the flagship, which is here in Seattle. It's called the Maxwell Hotel. Um, and that was, I believe, finished and opened in 2012. Um, so it's ground really up new. build. I mean, yeah, yeah. And, um, and it really just kind of went from there. Um, we are a unique hotel brand in that we currently own the 10 hotel properties uh, that we manage. Um, we recently made an announcement that we're going to start taking on franchise and third-party management, which is really exciting. Uh -huh. Yeah, so we'll be expanding into that. But um, it's been really interesting coming on to a brand where we have so much control over what we can do and what we're capable of because we own our buildings and because Michelle really built this foundation of culture within the company to be out of the box. and, and It be, seems like be, such a fun, yeah. happy culture. So yeah, it that's is. amazing. And that, that all just spawns from what she saw in the industry that was lacking and wanting to create a hotel product that had all of the elements of travel and hotels that she always wanted, but just wasn't seeing anywhere else. And, yeah. and that was sort of the, the foundational birth of who this brand is. Um, and we've just continued to kind of grow and build on. And I was poking around, like some of the videos on your site are just, you know, like you look at some of these videos, you're like, oh, they get it. Like they get my experience. So I encourage everyone to just the, the website alone speaks for, for the brand itself. So it's amazing. So I know that you're very, you know, eco and green. Tell us a little bit more about the initiatives um, to foster that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so we actually are pretty um, forward thinking. Our COO, Dina Bellon, she's incredible and she has a position coming from a background of sustainable um, builds and um, sustainable programs within organizations. Um, and so currently, one thing to note is that 70% of the energy or power that's used uh, to operate our hotels is actually sourced from renewable energy sources. 
Um, and we have a goal and a commitment to increase that to 90% by 2026. That's really exciting. Um, we also just uh, announced, so one thing we always um, made a very key uh, amenity point is that we have unlimited bottled water complimentary for all of our guests. Um, as we all know, within recent years, it's become more and more evident that we are just contributing way too much plastic by doing that uh, as a as a culture. Um, and so we are in the final stages of a partnership and rollout of Path Water Bottles. Um, so we're going to be replacing all of our complementary disposable water bottles with complementary Path Water. Um, those will be available in the room, and then those bottles are reusable, and we have yeah. a water bar that's going to be set up in every hotel so people can refill their bottles that they get complimentary from us. Um, and it's great because it also, these water bars will have uh, cold, hot, still, and sparkling so you can make your oh, own yeah. options. We're also looking into fun, like um, we really want to get some pineapple syrup and then be able to have a pineapple soda. You know, so pineapple there's so bar. much. <laughs> yeah, a little pineapple water bar. Um, so there's really a lot to grow off of with that, of how we can expand it. Um, but the path water thing is something we're really excited about. Um, we're also, you know, another thing that's really common in hotels is in-room coffee. And yeah. we love that amenity. Um, we use Keurig products. Um, and there are a lot of brands now that are starting to come out with compostable and more sustainable um, K-cup options. And so yeah. we're, re we're currently investigating and doing some R&D, um, lots of coffee taste testing of um, quality ones that are coming in those compostable cups so we can uh, divert the waste that we've been producing from K-Cups as well. Just looking at operations. Little, and, little yeah, things and then add Little up. items. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there's so much that the organization before I started, we're already doing, like I said, with the, the renewable energy usage and everything. So this is just one more sort of step. Um, we released on Earth Day a press release just about over the next five years, what some of our goals are. And that's everything from increased percentage of waste diversion, increased composting uh, percentages, uh, you know, so we're really striving over the next three to five years to make some big steps. That's, that's important and great to you. Um, and we met because of Dina. So that's, that's, and I love Dina. I mean, she is yeah. an incredible leader, a uh, great voice for our organization. Um, just has a lot to teach. Um, yeah. It's fun. It's fun working with her. That's awesome. So speaking of press releases, I know that there was big news this year. Ten of your hotels won the TripAdvisor Award. So I want to hear a little bit more about that. But I also want to dive into the fact uh, ratings and reviews from a marketer's perspective. We deal a lot with that on the food side, on the product Reputation side. management. Yeah. But, you know, tell us, you know, A, about this award, which congratulations, but B, Thank like you. getting, because the the TripAdvisor Award is that travelers said you guys are the best hotels, right? So that's amazing for all 10 properties. So yeah, it's a Traveler's Choice Award. All 10 of our hotels um, were awarded the uh, TripAdvisor Traveler's Choice. Uh, yeah, it's a great, uh, last year it was eight out of 10 hotels, which is to have 80% of your hotels received right? is incredible as well. So to have all 10 um, get that, it's really, uh, it speaks to the service of the, of the staff on site. Um, if, if you look at our TripAdvisor ratings for our hotels, we have three hotels that are in the top 10 uh, hotels within their markets. And these are big markets. You know, we're in New York, Chicago, Seattle, San Francisco, San Diego. Um, so it's not small markets. And uh, we also, I think five of our hotels are within the top 20 within their markets. Um, and beyond just the algorithm that is set up with that piece of pie from TripAdvisor of, you know, uh, the secret sauce, right? Of as long as you respond within a certain time and respond this many times, you'll go up higher in the ratings. Really, it just comes down to service standards, surprise and delights, um, friendly staff welcoming people upon arrival, flexibility with people need things. Um, you know, that's where it really starts. I also, I just like you, I managed reputation management for a long time. Um, when it became a big thing online, you know, a decade ago, it, what, what happens when there's a new communication thing in the industry and nobody knows who's going to do it? PR and marketing take it. And so, test it out. Yeah. So there was a lot of uh, methods and, you know, discussions about how often to comment, how often to reply, 
you know, all of these things. But and yeah, crisis just, communication, because sometimes yeah. in your industry, you can get something really and then you're. Yeah, exactly. If it's not of the value of what somebody spent, um, they're going to they're going to comment negatively. Of, yeah, it may have been a great hotel, but I spent way more than it was worth. Um, yeah. And so there's a lot of factors that go into it. But I just come back to we have a great operations leadership team um, out of our headquarters. And they trickle down that culture and that support of nature to their GMs, front desk staff. Um, and that's, again, really where it starts. I mean, it's pretty phenomenal to have three hotels out of 10 in the top 10 in their markets. I think we have a San Diego, I believe, is the fourth best hotel in San Diego. The Maxwell Hotel yeah. is the sixth best in Seattle. Um, and, you know, that's out of three or 400 hotels. And that all just speaks to that service. Yeah. And also, I think the culture, right? Like if you have happy people working at a company, then it's happier, yes, you know, exactly. response. So you brought up the word surprise and delight. So that's the world where I exist in surprising yes. and delighting influencers. And I know we've spoken in the past and you have this amazing organic influencer following, which kudos to you. So tell us a little bit more of like, is there anything special you do to surprise and delight influencers? Well, it, I mean, it really starts with communication from the beginning, right? Knowing who they are, they like um, our organic um, sort of influencer base really started uh, without effort from it was years ago. And there were a lot of influencers that were staying on their own board, posting about the experiences at the hotels. We all know that influencers follow influencers. They see others going places. That started us getting a lot of inquiries um, as an organization, um, and it just increased to a point where we had to have a bit more of a structured, streamlined process. Um, so in that, we have an online submission form to submit for collaboration requests. We then evaluate those, and then we have online contracting set up so that once- the Which is amazing. Open, it's incredible. And the process that we have in place now, I'd say it's about two-thirds automated um, you know, I really just go in and check yes, no, and, and what we need and what we don't need. Um, and then it gets into this communications funnel. Um, so it takes a lot of labor off of our team, but also creates the best experience because when they get that contract, it's not only a contract, it also outlines when do you anticipate arriving, when do you anticipate departure, the departure, um, what's your favorite food, what activities do you like? Um, we get a lot of pet influencers. Um, so what's the name of your pet? Uh, anything special we need to know about them? This all just gives us the tools then to really take care of them while they're on site. All of those notes then go into the reservation comments for the on hotels, on-site hotel staff so they can take even better care knowing when they're going to be there. What are they interested in? What kind of amenities do they like? You know, touching on all of these things. So that make really you feel personal. A, yeah, a curated experience without too much bandwidth or effort, keeping it as contained and informational as possible. Yeah, no, it's brilliant. And I like the fact that it's all kind of the contracts are there. And so you, you've built it all in. And so speaking of pets, I have a little eight pound toy schnauzer and we're going away and I can't take her with me because I don't think she likes flying. But I know you have a tremendous pet you know, personality or pet friendly. And I think everyone would love to hear about that a little bit more. And also, I think you mentioned something when we spoke out about pup program or pup package program. So tell us what that's all about. Yeah, well, we we live by the motto, we're not pet friendly, we're pet obsessed. Um, and that just means, you know, I think a lot of hotels make claims about pet friendly. And Pet friendly in the hospitality or hotel industry has basically just become, can my pet actually enter the doors? You know, and that's, and, and that's fine, you know, and, and people do travel with their pets. And so they need somewhere that they know that they can actually bring their pet along. But taking it to that next step, and this is one of the things that came from Michelle. Um, she had uh, or has dogs. She's had dogs through the years. She loves animals, loves dogs. And it was sort of to that earlier point about, what is the hospitality and hotel travel industry missing? And one of them was just true pet friendly approaches. Um, so beyond yeah, the pet package, if you um, book to bring your pet along, it's um, a lot of hotel groups, it's like 70, $75 a night. 
Um, ours is $25. And if you book direct and book the pet package on our website, it's half off of that. So it's only twelve fifty per night. Wow. And you get, yeah. And you get a, a, some gifts to take home, a, a collapsible dog bowl, um, a little pet waste dispenser with baggies, um, collar, a little but treat also- pin. The thing on the door, I think, was brilliant, yeah. too. Well, and that that goes to this idea of, you know, a lot of... Ho- so hotels will say pet-friendly, you can bring your pet. But most of them are very, very strict about leaving your pet in your room. You must be with your pet at all times on oh. property. And okay. so if you're traveling with your dog, how are you going to go out for dinner or go and experience the, a show when you can't leave your pet in the room? And so that was one of the big things. And so, yeah, we have uh, do not disturb door hangers. Um, and so if you're leaving your pet in your room at a state pineapple hotel, you put that on your door. It says, um, my owner is out exploring. Please leave me alone. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and then it's up to you. Um, we we like it. If, uh, if you're leaving your pet in your room, you can just notify the front desk uh, and leave your phone number. And you can get update texts on what's going on, yeah. check in. Um, and they will be able to text directly with you about it. Um, but it's just a, a big differentiator, in my opinion. I have a pup, too. She's yeah. a 14-pound Yorkie mix. Um, she is very well back trained, so she's my carry-on whenever we travel. Um, and having a hotel where I know that I, my wife and I can go out for dinner. She can uh, stay in their room. and will be safe and happy. She's got a dog bed, all the things she needs. It's, it's important. Um, and especially after the pandemic, there were a lot of, uh, pandemic pet adoption. Right? <laughs> right. Now we come out of that and everybody wants to travel again. And what are you going to do with your dog and or cat or, you know, we have lots of stories of some units that have come around. Yeah. Like what? Um, uh, they've told me about people coming with birds and other things. I mean, a pet is a pet and, you know, we are dog centric just because of our passion for dogs, but that it's a pet package. It's a pet production. So. Um, and we are doing it to that. That's awesome. Awesome. So, you know, when we talk about hospitality and influencers, it's very, very tricky. What do you think some of the biggest challenges the hospitality industry faces when it comes to influencer marketing or influencers in general? Yeah, well, touchy subject. Jared. Not, I, I okay. know. I, I could think, talk for. Yeah, I can too. And I, I'll say a few. So what Look, we all want to travel during the best times to travel, right? Summertime, weekends, these things. Of, of course, that is the preferred time to take a trip. But if an influencer or content creator is looking for a collaboration, they need to be aware of and understand that a weekend in yes. July in Seattle, I'm not going to be able to host you, most likely, you know, um, and that's not me. It's not my company. It's just the fact that we are probably at you know, 90 plus percent, we try not to sell out our hotels and over overwork the staff. Um, and so it just comes down to a, a availability thing. And so having that understanding and, and being aware of that, um, you know, weekdays off season, I know that your content may not be as beautiful and summery, but at the same time, you're getting that experiencing we love as hoteliers to share travel in those shoulder seasons and outside of the key travel times work with us on that. Um, you know, I, I think another big issue right now that I'm seeing, and I, I'm, I'm making speculation, I think that it's likely because there's a lot of industries or, or companies or tourism um, organizations that are strapped for bandwidth, maybe don't have the um, marketing people in place to really handle or manage. And what's ending up happening is they're almost just taking any. You know, it's, uh, yep, we have the availability. Yep, we can do it. And they're not doing their due diligence to check out the person's following, their engagement numbers. What this is doing is it's empowering in, it's empowering yeah. those that aren't technically influencers or don't have the numbers that they should to feel entitled to comps and freebies and hostings when then there's another organization that has a very systematic process in place and we have restrictions and guidelines and SLPs on what we can and can't do. And we look like the bad guys when we have to say no. And I, I, I urge marketing, even if you don't have someone in place that can do it, 
use the tools available. Yeah. Yeah, You've got tools like the influencer marketing hub and social blade. If you don't, these are free, you know, like, um, I know that social listening tools can be expensive, but there are free tools out there that you can evaluate, uh, following engagement, um, and check out the content. You know, I get a lot of, um, risk a account inquiries and, you know, like, yes, the following is huge and the engagement. But it's is not huge. on brand. It's not on brand. And I'm sorry. Like, I, it's not, it, I, I want to reach followers, but not with selfie focused style of content. It needs to focus right. on the product. You're collaborating with a brand, help us share that brand. Um, and so I think those are, you know, from either the influencer side or from the marketing side that some of the key issues. And, you know, I, I, I just hope that we can get to a point. It's growing. Influencer marketing and influencer collabs are not going anywhere. It's only getting bigger and with more social platforms. And, you know, and so we need to stay ahead of it as marketing professionals and educate ourselves and have the tools and the bandwidth to do it properly and um, work together. You know, don't, don't undermine the industry in a way that then makes it hard for others. No, for sure. And I know for us, like a lot of times, sometimes like brands can't even put it. It doesn't always have to be a hotel stay. There's other creative things that you could do if that's not within your, you know, capabilities that you could run a sweepstakes or a promotion or you could do a virtual tour of a property. I know it's not exactly the same thing, but you could offset a lot of the costs and a lot of the, you know, the muscle power that it takes to do some of this other kind of live stuff. Totally. And like how we were connected and your organization, you know, we have great pet friendly gifts and little items that are easy to send that pet friendly experience right. out and finding these ways to connect outside of what is Coming the to tradition. The yeah, yeah. What's the traditional style um, that also creates great content and sharing and brand recognition. And so, yeah, just finding ways, following the standards and the processes that we've built so hard go to conferences you know some great panels come out of conferences like um prsa's travel and tourism and you know these these organizations that are doing professional development where they have leaders that have been doing this for over a decade speaking on how they do it best sharing case studies you know learn grow work together that's that's the best way we're going to move forward as this part of the industry just it's bigger. Well, and I think you bring up also like we're coming out of like, okay, it was the pandemic. So everyone was camping and now everyone is traveling. So it's, it's, it's like tightened, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so you worked so long in hospitality and you obviously or must have some tales or fails when it comes to influencers. And I would love to hear one both sides, a great victory memory or a bad one, you choose. I can, yeah, I'll definitely, I'll give you one of each. Um, okay. we'll, we'll start with the positive. Um, one of my favorites, you know, I love fans, familiarity trips. They're so fun. Um, and oftentimes, you know, you're, you're inviting media influencers, content creators that maybe you don't know. Um, And when I was living in Austin, I was working for Fairmont and we were able to partner with ACL and do a fam. And we brought in a group of six influencers. It was influencer specific. And it was just the best. I mean, we had so much fun and they were so wonderful. Um, Everyone got along and it was just out of all of the fams and hostings and things I've done. It was one of my favorite weekends in my career. We had a blast. They created some amazing content. We just, I, it, it was so fun. Everyone just, yeah. And it reminded me like why we do it, you know, and, and like why we collaborate. And, um, so it was just a blast and not to mention we, you know, expensed VIP tickets to ACL. (laughs) There's that. um, Yeah. There's that whole part, but no, it was wonderful. It was so much fun. Um, on the flip side and part of why we now have our online contract, uh, is I've been burnt, you know, and, um, what I would recommend for anyone from my learnings of being burnt is check with your, be, check with whether you have counsel or someone within your organization or third party, 
check to make sure your contract can actually like hold up or even that your counsel, if, if an influencer doesn't meet the requirements, is actually going to be worth going down that road. You know, we hosted um, a celebrity level influencer during a very busy weekend of South by Southwest in Austin. So, you know, rooms were going for two, three thousand a night. So three nights of displaced revenue in a suite. You know, that was the entry level pricing. And this was a suite for a oh, celeb. Yes. And we were working with their agent. Um, they signed the contract. No posts ever went live. Yes. Nothing happened. I went back to the agent. Um, never heard back. Went to legal. Shared the signed contract. No, like, we can't do it. They were like, the, the billable hours that it will take to do anything with this is more than what the value of the stay was. So sorry. Um, and so now our contracts, our online contracts actually require a credit card to be put on file. That credit card will not be charged unless you do not meet the terms of the agreement within 30 days. Yeah. And if you don't meet the terms of the agreement within 30 days and you'll get a reminder, it's in our automation. If you haven't loaded and submitted your content, um, you'll get a reminder when we got your here. credit card is going to be charged and it's going to be charged the full retail value. And so, you know where we were with a collaboration of comps or maybe media rates or heavily discounted stays. Well, now it's gone to a, a full retail getting charged to you. And you, you know, again, signing a contract with a credit card connected to it, you agreed you were going to do this or be charged. And that eliminates the need, you know, make sure that that contract, we, we went through legal and counsel to make sure that it was solid and there was never going to be issues that came back on us for doing it this way. Um, but you learn from mistakes and after some mistakes, I was like, I can't, can't let this happen anymore. These don't it's hold up. brilliant. I wish everyone in the industry could do it. I don't think it translates for all, you know, if you're just a food company, could you, the, the $7.99 that it costs to buy this food isn't going to make or break the campaign, but you, you deal with, you know, influencers going MIA and then there's no recourse. So yeah, for sure. If it's a product where, like you said, it's, you know, you're sending it out. And with no strings attached, just hoping that there's going to be content because it's such a great product and the price point is there to do gifting um, going out, then, you know, it's a very different story. But right. if you are agreeing with this collaborator that they will create and post and share content in exchange for barter, for in exchange for hosted or discounted experiences, get a contract that does not need legal involved if it doesn't follow through. Get their support in creating it, making sure that it is accurate and sound. And then you've got a process in place that is sustainable. And I will, I will say I have never, so this was a process that I in play, had in place at Fairmont. I brought it to State Pineapple and we've created this online contract connected credit card. Over probably four or five years of doing this, I've never had to bill an influencer for the full retail value. And I think that that speaks to the process. The, yeah, the communication and the understanding that is created in this of, hey, we are, we are legit. We're not messing around. We want to make right. sure, but we are excited to work with you. And please ensure that you follow the term. I have had to send personal friendly reminders outside of the automated one, um, but it always has ended up creating great content and we've never had to do the billing back. So. It's, it's so far just a CYA. Yeah. Well, it's a really smart process to have in place. So if you can do it, I highly recommend it. And I'm just going to finish off with my last question, which I always ask, and a lot of people kind of steer away from it, but I'm going to put it out there. Name an influencer you love to follow, but hate to admit that you do. Um, yeah, I, I got ahead. I got a kick out of this one. Um. I'm pretty honest. I'm not, I'm not too worried about <laughs> sharing my, I, I love comedy, uh, accounts, you know, like I'm all about the, can I, can I cuss on here? Is that yeah. fuck, fuck Jerry is hilarious. And I've always loved all the content, um, beige cardigan from them and, you know, just silly memes and gifts and that kind of stuff. I, I don't, I, that's what I'm going to keep scrolling. Um, but okay. yeah, it's less influencers and more of just accounts. I, I like follow spoof. up. Yeah, or uh, Tinder Nightmares, if you followed that one. It's so good. Um, and it's just, you know, screen grabs of crazy uh, text or messages and Tinder. 
Tinder came out after I got married. So I get to live vicariously through uh, Tinder this. nightmares. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, thank you. Um, yeah. it, it says a lot, like the kind of accounts, the happiness and the happy vibe. Love having you on the show. And if you want to share with everyone, how can they go visit Pineapple Hotel? Tell them where they could find you also. Yeah, for sure. So uh, website is statepineapple.com. Um, make sure to check the offers page. Um, we've got some great, like I was saying, if you book through the offers page, you get half off pet fees. Um, we often do half off parking if it's at locations with parking. If you follow our accounts, we typically do flash sales about every other month. Um, wow. And those are anywhere from 20 to 30% off. They run for anywhere from 48 hours to four days. Um, so keep an eye out for those. There's some great rates that are getting put out there. Um, I will say San Francisco and, and Portland as destinations are probably two that are still really building back after the pandemic to get tourists back. Um, so just so you know, it's a great time to travel to those locations, mainly because prices are phenomenal. Lower. You know, we've got yeah. some during the summertime right now in San Francisco, some rates that you would have never seen pre been. And it's across the hotel industry. So, um, but yeah, follow our accounts. We put up, um, it's either at State Pineapple or at State Pineapple Hotels. We'll always be putting up flash sales, promos. We do a lot of sweeps. Um, so make sure to be getting engaged with those. Our favorite one of the year is coming up in a couple of months. It's the uh, pet costume contest for Halloween. <laughs> uh, that's a great one. We get some amazing content. People love it. Uh, posting silly pictures of dogs and cats and costumes. That's awesome. I'm going to submit um, my little sprout. Do it. Do it. It's a lot of fun. It makes some great. And then we do different categories and people vote. It's a public voting. So everybody gets to vote on their favorites. So it's a lot of fun. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much. Continue yeah, success. You, That's what we're wishing you. And everyone keep traveling. Yes, definitely. All right. Thanks thank again. Thank you. Thanks everyone for tuning in. That was a great conversation, especially learning from Casey about all the pet friendly privileges Stay Pineapple offers. My little dog Sprout and I are going to be super excited to visit one of the Stay Pineapple hotels. For more information about this show, please visit babblebox.com. That's www.babblebox with two X's.com. And you can find more information about Casey, our podcast, and Stay Pineapple Hotels. I'm really excited for our next episode. We are taking a new approach. We're interviewing three influencers who are moms, but they're not just any moms. They just had babies, and we want to hear it from their perspectives. So please keep following, keep listening, and stay tuned for our next episode.